Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is the only standard for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, I trust you woke up this morning feeling fresh and alive in the spirit of the living God. You know, I had a viewer make that very comment that he woke up this morning and he felt alive in the spirit. And friends, I want to encourage you, we can do that every single day. Now, when our eyes first open, we may not feel that. But if we begin to focus on the majesty of God, on the throne, ruling the things of earth, ruling the dominions of heaven, full of grace and mercy and truth and offering love to all those who would receive. If we would begin to focus on those things and not the things that are present with us in this life, friends, we will wake up every day feeling fresh and alive in the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Well, today is September the 16th, in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, two things before we jump into our text this morning. Several viewers have made comments as to how they listen to One a Day each morning, and it seems as if I'm speaking directly to their souls. And the reason for that is, is the message of God that is going out throughout the earth to all those who have ears to hear, is the same message. God isn't saying different messages to different people. It's the same message. The question is, are we listening? Now, on the flip side of that, it also seems like the people of God are enduring the same strategy and attacks from the enemy. He's not working differently among us He's working the same against all of us. And so I say that because I want to encourage you to understand that you are not going through the issues, through the circumstances, the difficulties that you're experiencing. You're not alone in those things. I'm going through them. Every viewer that's listening to this is going through the same things. The attacks are the same. And that should cause you to want to pray for your brothers and sisters as well as for yourselves that we would stand true to the message of God and we would remain faithful to the end. Now, the other thing that I would like to mention to you is we have done a study called The Road to Calvary. We have two books on it. So you'll find The Road to Calvary Book 1 in the playlist and you'll find The Road to Calvary Book 2 in the playlist. And friends, if you're not listening to these, if you're not participating in these studies, you are missing out not only on a blessing, but a part of growth that is very important in your journey for the Lord. So I can't encourage you enough. It's nothing that I did. It's simply reading a book that was written back in the 50s, maybe the 40s, by a gentleman by the name of Roy Hesion, and he was spot on. It's changing my life, and I know that it will change yours as well. Now, with that being said, our text this morning is going to be taken out of the book of Proverbs, and we want to look specifically at beginning at verse 20, which says, Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city, she utters her words, saying, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. So the question is, how long will you remain simple? And will not you seek the deeper things of God? Well, what is the deeper things of God? It is wisdom. And what is wisdom? It's exactly what this world needs. It's exactly what will change this world. Let's pick this up in Job in chapter 28. And let's begin at verse 12. 
Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Now we know from our previous reading that wisdom is crying aloud to all those who would have ears to hear. And so the question here is, well, for those that do have ears to hear, where can wisdom be found? Look at verse 13. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. You're not going to find wisdom in colleges. You're not going to find wisdom in books. It's not among the living, and it's more precious than gold. Verse 14, the depth saith, it is not in me, and the sea saith, it is not with me. You see, it cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. You can't purchase it. You can't earn it. You can't work for it. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx, or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. And the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. It is more precious than anything offered unto man. So where will we find it? No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Now, if you remember the Indiana Jones movies, there was always one prized possession that Indiana Jones was always after. Well, it seems, and, and I haven't researched this, so I don't know what the topaz of Ethiopia it is, but apparently it was a prized possession, a prized jewel, but even it shall not equal wisdom. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all the living, and it is kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and death say, We have heard the fame thereof with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. So God knows where it may be found. But where is it? For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and he seeth under the whole heaven, to make the weight for the winds, and he weighs the water by measure. When he made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lighting of the thunder, then did he see it, and he declared it. He prepared it, yea, and searched it out. And unto man he said, Behold, this is where it is. This is where you may find wisdom. The most prized possession a man can seek for. This is where you will find it. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Now that's probably not what you thought he was going to say. But it is in fearing God that wisdom is found, friends. It is in reverencing God. It is in obeying God. But the reason we reverence and obey God is because we fear God. And if God made himself present to all upon the earth, friends, people would live their lives differently. But it is because people do not fear God that they live against God. And it finishes by saying, to depart from evil is understanding. Now go back and look at verse 12. The question was, where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding? Now look at verse 28. And unto man he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. You see, if we fear God, we will depart from evil. And so we will gain both wisdom and understanding. But we cannot Depart from evil until we fear God. And that's important because we live our lives as if God were present living in another place, in another time, occasionally taking notice of what we're doing. But what this says is that God is always aware of every detail of our lives. And if we lived every detail of our lives, under the fear of God, our lives would be much different. So I encourage you, friends, to spend some time pondering on this passage and even more so on the presence of God in your life. 
And may that draw you closer unto him as you begin to fear him and live according to his will and his rule. Well, friends, I love you, and I'm so thankful again that you are here this morning, and I pray that this has fed your spirit and challenged your spirit and caused you to want to be a better servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.